Hi there, welcome to my tutorial. Let's make some clowns. So, now that we have a basic interactive particle system, we can add the visuals. We're gonna start by making an unlit shader graph. I'm gonna call mine cloud particles. And what you wanna do next is create a material from that shader. I'm gonna call it matte cloud particles. So in the particle system, go to the render module and you wanna select the mesh render mode. I've provided a mesh on my tutorial page. What you want to do is drag and drop that mesh in the mesh slot and assign the made material. Make sure to set the sorting mode to by depth to avoid any weird front to back popping of the particles. So in the shader, we're going to start off with some vertex displacement to make the clouds uh, move a bit less uniform. We're going to start with a gradient noise and a tile and offset node. We're going to add a time and multiply node and make a float variable to control the speed of it. I'm going to set the speed to 0 0.05. I'm also going to make a variable to control the scale of the noise map. Next, we're going to multiply it with a normal vector mode in object space. And we are going to multiply this with a variable. This will control the intensity of the displacement. I put the displacement intensity on 0.3. Next, we're going to add a position node to this. And if you did all that, you can connect it to the position node and save the asset. And as you can see, now we have a more of a less uniform moving cloud. So let's tidy it up a bit. Group the selection, call it vertex displacement. And next up is the coloring of the cloud. And what I want to do is make a basic two color lerp uh, to get a more cartoonish feel. And to actually kind of get some depth back into the clouds. So add your position node in world space. You can choose to do it in object space as well. It's up to you. We're going to split it and get the green channel and subtract it with a float variable I'm going to call color divide height. This is going to control the division edge of the two colors, the height of it. Next, we're going to make a clamp node and set it to a maximum of 10 and add a float variable to it, which will control the clamp node connect it to a divide node with the subtract and now we have control over a blur clamp it again to keep the values between 0 and 1 and add it to the lerp node now we can add this color node to the base color and check the results now we have a line separating two colors we can move it up and down and we can also increase the blur of the edge. It's not a very clean blur, but it does the trick for this one. So you can play around with this a bit. So for the next bit, I made a plane and some slight adjustments to the shape module. I made it a rectangle to get it more in a wider space and I decreased the particles a bit. I made the plane because we're gonna add alpha to our clouds. And I wanted to blend with objects of the scene without having a hard edge. 
So, initiate a graph. Create a scene depth node and set its sampling to I. Add it to a subtract node and add a screen position node and put the mode to roll. Split that node and get the alpha channel into the subtract node. Then you want to connect the result into a divide node and add a float variable called fade depth. This is going to control how far the uh, the alpha is going to go in comparison to the object it's connected to. Connect to the alpha node and check the results. And as you can see now, we have a slightly blurry line at the bottom, which we can increase in size. So next up, we actually want the rest of the clouds to look fluffy as well. I am going to accomplish this with adding a Fresnel effect. Well, since this Fresnel effect is going to be multiplied around the edge, we want the opposite. We want the center of it to only be visible. So we're going to invert it with a one minus node and create a power float variable, which is going to control the size of it. Next, we are going to smooth step those values. So we have more control over the thickness of the edge. We're going to make transparent create two float variables and just play around with them a little bit so you can get a feel for how they work. Uh, I'm going to set mine to, let's see, the edge 1 to dot 3 or something and the edge 2 to dot 8, I guess. Once you've done that, you want to multiply it with the scene depth we made before and add it into your alpha channel. So this is the result. Now we have some fluffy looking blobs just moving around. But as you can see, the little fade effect we had before in the vertex color is now gone. The particles are popping in and out. And that is because we have our own material now, which isn't using vertex colors. So it doesn't get used by the color over lifetime module. There's an easy fix for it. We're going to multiply our alpha with a vertex color node which is first split and we will only grab the alpha and now there isn't any popping in and out of particles anymore with this the shader for the particles is done now all that's left to do is change it and tweak all the variables to your liking On my tutorial page next I will talk about how you can use it to implement it in your game uh, or to use it in some visual elements. Uh, I'm going to talk about the downsides of doing it this way and what you could do to maybe optimize it a little bit. So that's it for this one. Thanks for watching and till next time.